Mrs. Geeta, a 65-year-old retired teacher from Nagpur, came to us with difficulties of remembering things. She was very happy as a teacher and after her retirement, she was even more excited to leave the rest of her life in peace. She was always very friendly to her students and also her co-workers, but something began in six months after her retirement that completely changed her life. And it started with simply forgetting things. It started small with did I put some salt in my dal or did I cook the vegetables properly to where are the keys of the two-wheeler, I cannot find it, to something much more severe in a matter of just few months, where Mrs. Geeta started forgetting the name names of the streets on which she had walked several times, the names of her loved ones which she knew for a long time. And not just that, her mood became completely unstable. The lady who was peaceful, who was calm, who was very composed and very happy all the time suddenly started having extreme mood swings. Sometimes she would get extremely angry and sometimes she would get totally depressed. This was very challenging for her family but as always which happens in India, people ignore their symptoms. So she continued ignoring her symptoms and just a few months later she started noticing that she is not able to pick up the items that she usually used to pick up. Her hand is losing coordination and she is finding it even difficult to walk. And one day while walking when she fell down, that is when the family decided it's time to take Miss Geeta to the doctor. And that is when we discovered something much more deeper, something much more complicated, which was completely destroying her brain. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anush Bachel. I'm a first year MD medicine resident at Government Medical College Nagpur and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this amazing series that I call Case Files, where I discover rare yet interesting medical cases that I see and that I hear about and that I read about on the internet with you guys so that you stay updated on your knowledge and you get to learn something new about this beautiful thing that we call as the human body. So I can share just some of my passion with you and make you interested in this beautiful field of medicine. So let us start the story of the silent predator that was latching on to Mrs. Geeta's brain. As her forgetfulness grew, she also started developing motor issues. Motor means difficulty controlling your body with sudden onset agitation, mood swings and unexplained periods of confusion that made even the most simple task extremely challenging. At the age of 65 or 66, when all of these problems were happening, a new onset disturbance of gait wherein she could not walk, she could not balance, she could not coordinate her body made her have a fall. Thankfully, none of the bones were fractured and that's when she came to us. In the hospital, after treating the wound, we took a detailed history of Miss Geeta. She told us, Doctor, I keep on forgetting the things. I cannot remember the names of the people. I cannot remember their faces. I start having confusion. And not just that, even my hands tremble sometimes. It was clear that this was a neurological disorder and a neurologist had to be involved for further assessment. The neurologist examined her thoroughly and he noticed a lot of findings which were very disproportionate to her age. A person of 65, 66 year old had a brain which was aging and which was getting destroyed as somebody with the age of 85. There were a lot of differential diagnosis as to what this condition was, right from neurodegenerative disorders to Alzheimer's disease and various other forms of dementia. And finally, a medical case file was formulated. A patient named Geeta Krishnamurti, age 65, female, retired teacher came to us with the chief complaints of forgetfulness, mood swings and difficulties with balancing over the past six months. She lives with her family. She is not a smoker, not an alcoholic, does not have diabetes or hypertension. And there has been no exposure to any toxin in the recent days. She has no family history which is significant. That means none of her relatives have ever had the same complaint in this age as she is having. In general examination, she is oriented to person but not to time or place. That means she is not able to tell ki whether it is day or night, what time it is, but she is able to tell that she is Geeta and I am Anuj. On CNS examination, cognition is impaired with memory recall and executive function severely impaired. That means she is not able to recall anything. If I ask her 10 minutes ago, what did I ask you? She is not able to recall. If I ask her, what did you have for breakfast? She is not able to recall that also. So her memory is impaired. And executive function is also significantly affected. On testing her gait, it is an unsteady gait where she is having so much difficulty walking. The Romberg test is positive and she has fine tremors in her hands. Cranial nerves are thankfully intact and there is no focal deficit that we could find. Several investigations and blood reports were sent, checking to see her complete blood count to see if it was some sort of infection, some viral encephalitis or something like that, which came out to be normal. A complete thyroid panel was done because sometimes thyroid diseases also affect the brain. B12 levels were done which were completely normal. In severe B12 deficiency, your entire nervous system is affected and it is very severe. It can present with gait disturbances, sensory deficits and even motor deficits. And then we ordered an MRI. The MRI showed something very characteristic. 
As you can see, this is the MRI report. The EEG also showed a specific pattern. And most importantly, on the CSF, when we ordered a rare test called as 1433 protein, it showed that this 1433 protein was positive. With all of these things in mind, unfortunately, we came at a conclusion that Ms. Geeta is suffering from something called as Kersfeld Jacob disease or prion disease, which is a rapidly progressive neurodegenerative disorder which has no cure. And this prion disease is slowly turning her brain into a sponge. Exactly. Holes in the brain turning it into a sponge. It looks something like this. So what exactly is prion disease, my friends? Well, let me tell you a story about proteins in order to understand prion disease. Proteins are just chains of amino acids. Whenever you make a chain of amino acids, they have a tendency to fold and wrap in various ways. Now, always and always in our human body, there is a particular way of doing things. Similarly, we have a particular way of folding our proteins so that they do the function that is assigned to them. For example, if you need a receptor to be shaped like a semicircle and instead some sort of protein misfolding happens and it is shaped rather like a cube, that receptor is no use to us. One of the classical examples of a disease that happens due to misfolding of proteins where they are oriented in a different manner is prion disease. Now what happens? Proteins are misfolded but how does it exactly cause problems? You see the proteins which are misfolded continue on accumulating in your body because there is no enzyme that can actually fit that particular protein to break it down. You see proteins have a specific shape and enzymes that are needed to break them down find those specific shapes and break these proteins down but when a misfolded protein is present especially in your brain it keeps on accumulating and there is no one to destroy that protein this accumulation of protein continues to spread into different areas of the brain through neuron and neuron and so this disease is transmitted from one misfolded protein to multiple misfolded proteins all across the brain. In short, this misfolded protein, my friends, is called as a prion. And this prion disease, unfortunately, as you can imagine, has no cure. How does it present? You imagine your brain to be a group of neurons that are all managing themselves on folded proteins in the correct orientation. But once you start this prion disease, then this protein misfolding spreads all throughout the brain. It starts slowly and slowly in all the areas. So motor area, sensory area, cerebellar area, gait area, speech area, cognition, cranial nerves, everything. It affects everything. So you start to have patients presenting with multiple different complaints. Like I'm not able to see properly. I'm not able to hear properly, signifying cranial nerve damage. I'm not able to remember things or I'm not able to recognize the people, signifying cognition damage. Not just that, I'm not able to control my arms having tremors in my hands. That is showing that it is also affecting the motor areas of the brain. And lastly, also not able to walk. That is the sensory areas as well as cerebellar areas of the brain. As you can see, prion disease affects the brain in every single way possible. And since it's a misfolded protein, there is no treatment that you can give that can actually refold the protein or degrade it because it will actually destroy the other normal proteins of your body as well. So how do you exactly get this CJD and what is the incidence of CJD? So it is an extremely rare disorder. It is one of the last things that we consider when we have a patient coming to us with these symptoms, but it is sure on the differential diagnosis. There are three major ways in which you can get CJD. One is the 85% of the cases where it is sporadic. That means randomly it starts to happen and that is usually due to some misfolding happening in your proteins. Next, we have the hereditary CJD where the defected protein gene is transmitted from your parents, which is about 10 to 15% of the cases. And lastly, we have an infective form of CJD. That means a person with Crisfeld Jacob disease comes in contact with you, their brain comes in contact with you, and then you get this particular disease. Thankfully, this way is extremely rare and it is unlikely to happen. It starts at the age of around 60 and it is so rapidly progressive that within a year, the patient dies. Not just that, the prion disease is not exclusive to humans. Do you know, in fact, in animals such as cow, this prion disease can be found and it's called as the mad cow disease. Unfortunately for Ms. Geeta, there was no treatment available and we had to continue her on symptomatic treatment, trying it out from the multidimensional approach. The human body is extremely complex and even more complex are the diseases that happen to humans. With each episode of Case File, I bring a new disease, a new clinical condition in front of you and make sure that you learn something about it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss any case files ever. Just go down there and click that red button and make it turn grey. If you're watching till the end, make sure you comment Case Files so that I know you want more. Thank you so much, it's your boy Dr. Anuj and I'll see you in the next month with another Case Files episode. Goodbye.